In this lesson, we continue our journey in software design by covering another important object-oriented design principle. And that is the open-close principle. This principle states that software entities such as classes, methods, and packages, or generally speaking, software modules, should be open for extension but closed for modification. In other words, software should be designed in such a way that new functionality should cause minimum changes to already working and tested code. In the development lifecycle, new requirements continue to pour in, and if the developers are forced to constantly change the already completed and tested modules to support new requirements, the design is considered fragile. Ideally, developers should be able to change the environment surrounding a module rather than changing the module itself. This principle, in my opinion, is the closest friend to software testing than all the other design principles. When unit tests are passing for existing software functionality, the cost of modifying those fully functioning and, and well-tested components to support new requirements is quite high. Not only must you modify already working code, you also have to modify those test cases that you wrote. Things can break where you least expect, so the open-close principle saves developers from fragile design. Let's take an example for studying this principle. Consider our previous application for the hospital employee management system. Let's expand upon that idea to represent the work that employees do in an emergency room setting. Obviously, not all employees have the same exact behavior. If the employee is a nurse, he or she checks vitals of patients. If the employee is a doctor, he or she diagnoses patients and prescribes medicine. So I'll first create an implementation that violates the open-close principle. And after that, we can refactor it to better comply um, with this design principle. All right, so here we are in Eclipse. I've already created the employee class, which is pretty much identical to what we had created for lesson four. And in here, it's just a basic POJO with some attributes and a constructor. So now I want to create a derivative of this class. So we'll create a nurse, and it's going to extend uh, the employee class. We need to implement a constructor for this. And this, in the nurse's constructor, it's basically just deferring to the super constructor of the employee class. So the arguments that we pass to instantiate a nurse would just be passed onto the employee's constructor. So to manage the state of the nurse, we don't have to have these uh, attributes on the nurse class. We can just use the ones that were defined in the employee class. All right, so in this um, instantiation, I just want to add a simple print line statement that will just show that we have instantiated a nurse. And we're going to do the same thing with the doctor class which is another derivative of employee. Extends employee. Implement the constructor. Add the print line statement. All right, so now we're done with the employee hierarchy. Uh, both of these classes are derivatives of the employee class. Now what I want to do is create a I'll create the hospital management class. The intent of this class is to call upon employees to perform their respective duties. This class represents upper management in a hospital. And upper management should be able to order all kinds of employees, uh, like nurses and doctors and other staff members, to perform their respective duties. So in this first iteration, I'm going to make this class responsible for knowing all of the different types of behaviors employees at the hospital are capable of conducting. So we'll start with nurses. 
Nurses can, for example, check vital signs of patients. And I'll leave a simple Im implementation saying checking vital signs. Nurses can draw blood, for example. And I'll also leave a simple Im implementation for this. And nurses can clean patient area. Now coming over to doctors. Doctors can prescribe medicine. And they can also diagnose patients. Now hospital management should have the capability of being able to call upon any employee to carry out their duties. So I'll define a method here called call upon. And it should take in an employee object. And since it should be able to support all types of employees doing work, I'll do a check to see whether this employee is a nurse or a doctor. And based on that check, this method will execute uh, those particular responsibilities. So we'll check to see whether it's a nurse. And if it is, then we will be executing these methods here. And the other check is for doctors. So else if uh, the employee that was passed in as, as an argument to this method, if that employee is an instance of doctor, then we need to conduct a different type of behavior. Prescribe medicine and diagnose patients. All right, so this class for now is complete. We'll be coming back to this shortly. Next, I'll create a class called Emergency Room. Um, I'll call it Emergency Room Process. This class will contain a main method so that we can test our objects. So basically, the scenario we are going to create here is that hospital management will enter the emergency room and tell all kinds of employees to perform their respective duties. And that logic is captured in the hospital management class here. We'll instantiate the objects we need and test our system. So let's get started on that. So I'll create the main method. And I'll instantiate a hospital management object. And we can call this as uh, ER director. Next, I'll instantiate some employees. Let's start with, an, with a nurse. Her name is going to be Peggy. And we need to pass in some arguments for this. She works for the emergency room. And the last argument we can leave as true. Next, we'll make Peggy do some work. So the hospital management object ER director, um, we can say call upon uh, Peggy to perform her duties. Now when I run this, let's run it and see what happens. It runs as expected. The nurse is in action. That's when we instantiate the nurse object. That's what gets printed. And she's doing her responsibilities. She's checking vitals, drawing blood, and cleaning patient area. Now, if I instantiate a doctor here, this ER director object should be able to call upon a doctor to do his respective duties. And that logic, again, is captured in this hospital management object. So let's try that. The first argument is the ID. The name is Susan. The department is emergency. And the last argument is true. And the ER director can call upon her to carry out her responsibility. Now when I run this, it's working ex as expected. Up to here was the nurse stuff, and here the doctor is in action, and he's prescribing medicine, and he's diagnosing the patients. And all that logic is captured here. Now there are several issues with this design. The first thing to always look for when improving design is object responsibility. 
Understand that we are developing a component that represents employees working. Take a look at the employee classes. We have nurse, doctor, and then we have the uh, employee class. There's no work behavior defined for any of these employees. That's a big red flag. So where is this behavior defined if it's not on the employee objects? Well, we put it in the hospital management class. Unfortunately, this class is like a junk drawer containing all kinds of behaviors employees at the hospital are capable of conducting. Employee behavior should be carried out by employee objects. Anytime you see conditional statements based around the instance of keyword like we were using here, you should think about object responsibility and tucking that away someplace else because these messages certainly do not belong here. Think about it. Let's say requirements came in to also support the work done by the hospital CEO or department directors or janitors and security guards. This class would quickly become messy with many, many more instances of conditionals. This class already knows way too much. It knows what doctors and nurses do, and pretty soon it will know the duties of many other employees in the hospital if we leave it as is. Again, recall that the open-close principle states that software modules should be open for extension and closed for modification. This class is a big violator of the open-close principle. Because instead of being closed for modification, this class would actually invite and need modification to support other employees doing work at the hospital. So let's quickly fix this before more business requirements come in to support other employees. We'll start with the obvious. Let's give employee objects the behavior that they are responsible for conducting. I'll move the nurse's responsibilities out of here and put it into the nurse class. Okay. And the doctor deserves this responsibility, so let's move that over. So to still support the ability for hospital management to be able to call upon any object, uh, any employee to do their respective work, what I'll do is I'll make the I'll make the employee class an abstract class. And I'll define an abstract method here called perform duties. Now since this is now an abstract class, all derivatives of this class such as the doctor and the nurse uh, must uh, implement the abstract methods. So let's click on this add unimplemented methods, perform duties pops up. And now we can just call these methods in the perform duties method. Same thing with the doctor. We need to implement that method. And I'll just call these methods defined in here. Now let's fix hospital management. Let's get rid of all of these if statements. Now all we have to do is call the perform duties method on the employee object that was passed in. There you go. And this should still work as was before. As you can see when we created Peggy, she's a nurse, we passed that in to, this, to the ER director. He was able to call upon that nurse to do her duties and this is what the nurse did. Great. Same thing with the doctor. So it works. Now hospital management has a lot less responsibility. It no longer needs to know the details of what a doctor does or what a nurse does. If more types of employees are added, such as department managers or security guards, they would all just do work as defined in their own class definitions and the specifics of their behavior will be no one's business. This system is now open for extension and closed for modification. You no longer have the need to modify uh, the framework to support new employee responsibilities. This also could have been done using an interface rather than making the employee class abstract. And for that, 
we could have defined an interface, say, employee work, and added the perform duties behavior there and have all our employees implement that interface. Both approaches allow for abstraction, and that's what this design principle is about. It makes the system more abstract to support extensibility. The refactoring we did to correct this design and get rid of all of those instance of occurrences happens to be a widely used design pattern in the industry. It's called a strategy design pattern. The formal definition of the strategy pattern, as defined on Wikipedia, and I'll quote it as is because I think it's nicely worded, is that this pattern enables an algorithm's behavior to be selected at runtime. This pattern lets the algorithm vary independently from the clients that use it. And this is exactly what we accomplished. We encapsulated the details of work a particular kind of employee does. Clients can now use a consistent interface to tell employees to perform their respective responsibilities without getting into the details of what they are and how specific employees perform them. A unit test written for, let's say, the hospital management class would not require modification if we extended the system to support several different kinds of employees because all these employees would respond to the perform duties message. Okay, so we have come to the end of this lesson. There is an accompanied exercise that I highly recommend you do so that you can get some practice applying the open-close principle. I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.